Hi, thanks for tuning in to another episode on Christians on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. And hopefully, you'll learn something useful from what we've put together for you here. And for this episode, I'd like to share something from Father Stephen Inverado, who's also kind enough to do a weekly question and answer session for us all, answering the questions that you might have about the faith. The other day, an evangelical, you know, went on the long uh, journey of there's no mediator between God and man. So, and actually denigrated the Blessed Virgin Mary. I could never figure that out. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, right? I mean, how can you read that in Scripture and then imply that Mary is just an ordinary woman? How can you get your mind around Revelation chapter 12 and the fact that, that Mary had the singular grace, the particular grace, to carry God in her womb and think or imply that Mary is just an ordinary woman? It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. And then, of course, the saints can't intercede for us. So I simply asked this person, can you pray for me? Can I pray for you? And I think that she actually got it um, uh, because at one point she apologized. She said, I'm sorry. So maybe she got it. See, I can intercede for you and you can intercede for me. Correct? Right? Right? I ask you to pray to Jesus for me. <clears throat> you ask me all the time to pray to Jesus for you. And then I ask the Blessed Mother and all the angels, martyrs, and saints to pray for me, my intentions, which include you and your intentions. So it really is uh, the mystical body of Christ working together, the communion of saints working together for all of our salvation. Just because somebody dies and goes to heaven, they're not out of the game. Now, of course, uh, there's the question of whether our Christian brothers and sisters really believe the saints are saints. Now, you know, they, they could doubt they could doubt any number of saints, but I don't think they can doubt uh, any saint that was martyred, right? So they'd have to actually agree or acquiesce that there are saints in heaven. I mean, I, I would ask any evangelical, non-Catholic Christian, do you believe that there are saints in heaven? Because, of course, anyone in heaven is a saint. Do you believe that they, because they're dead and in heaven, are out of the out of the mix, out of the mix, that somehow they're not they don't want to help us get to heaven? I mean, how is that love? How is that loving the Lord our God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, and then loving our neighbor as ourselves? So someone dies and goes to heaven, and that's it, nah, 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 I made it, you're on your own. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, right? So uh, it, it the, the whole intercessory aspect of the Catholic faith is so powerful, so beautiful, and so practical, so rational, so reasonable, right? So again, I hope that helps you if you're not Catholic and you're listening to this broadcast. And uh, of course, I would have thought that everybody listening to this broadcast is Catholic, but obviously they're not. And um, I hope that helps you. And, and maybe if you are Catholic, it will help you explain to our Christian brothers and sisters who are not Catholic why intercessory prayer has been part of the 2,000-year history of the church. And it's reasonable and practical, and indeed it should be, right? Because everything about our Catholic faith is reasonable and, of course, uh, practical. And now for the second part of this video, I'd like to share a little bit more about the communion of saints from Father Mitch, who says that most Bible-believing Christians object to the Catholic practice of praying to the saints. These critics worry that Catholics will go to hell for offending God with a neo-pagan system of worship when the Catholic Church encourages devotion and prayer to the saints. In no way does it intend for its members to practice some form of superstition. 
Never does the church instruct the faithful to conjure the spirits of the saints to carry on some two-way communication. There are no occult practices that try to make them appear, speak messages, tap tables, or anything of the sort. The faith of the church is that the saints are not really dead, but are fully alive in Jesus Christ, who is life itself, and the bread of life who bestows life on all who eat his flesh and drink his blood. The saints are alive in heaven because of the life they have received through their faith in Christ Jesus, and through their eating of his body and blood. And the book of Revelation shows the saints worshipping God, singing hymns, playing instruments, making requests to Christ to avenge their martyrdom, and offering prayers for the saints on earth. Because they are alive, we believe that we can go to them to intercede for us with God. We do not need to see apparitions or hear their voices in order to believe they will pray for us in heaven. We trust that the saints will accept our requests for help and will present them to Christ for us. And then it's also important to remember that God expects us to pray for one another. We see this in both the Old and New Testaments. For example, when the Lord is angry with Job's friends because they did not speak rightly about God, he tells them, Let my servant Job pray for you because I will accept his prayer, lest I make a terror on you. Paul wrote to the Romans, I exhort you, brothers, through our Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, to strive with me in prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be delivered from the disobedient in Judea, and that my ministry may be acceptable to the saints in Jerusalem, so that in the joy coming to you through the will of God I may rest with you. And secondly, the reason that Christians have the power to pray for one another is that each person who is baptized is made a member of the body of Christ by virtue of the Holy Spirit's action in baptism. It is because Christians belong to Jesus Christ and is a member of his body, the church, that we can make effective prayer. The reason we pray to the saints is that they are still members of the body of Christ. Remember, the life which Christ gives is eternal life. Therefore, every Christian who has died in Christ is forever a member of the body of Christ. This is the doctrine which we call the communion of the saints. Everyone in Christ, whether living or dead, belongs to the body of Christ. From this it follows that a saint in heaven may intercede for other people, because he still is a member of the body of Christ. Because of this membership in Christ under his headship, the intercession of the saints cannot be a rival to Christ's mediation. It is one with the mediation of Christ, to whom and in whom the saints form one body. Some Christians, most Protestants in fact deny that the Bible gives support for devotion to the saints, but they are incorrect. The Bible encourages Christians to approach the saints in heaven, just as they approach God the Father and Jesus Christ the Lord. But you have approached Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and myriads of angels, and the assembly and church of the firstborn who have been enrolled in heaven, and God the judge of all, and spirits of righteous ones who have been made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood which speaks better than that of Abel. It is clear the Christian has approached a number of heavenly beings, the heavenly Jerusalem, the angels, God the judge, and Jesus the mediator the assembly and church of the firstborn who have been enrolled in heaven, and the phrase spirits of righteous ones who have been made perfect can refer only to the saints in heaven. First, they are spirits, not flesh and blood. Second, they are righteous people, presumably made righteous by Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness. Third, they have been made perfect. The only place where spirits of perfected righteous people can dwell is heaven. Furthermore, spirits of righteous ones who have been made perfect is a perfect definition of the saints in heaven. Just as Christians approach the angels, God the judge, Jesus Christ, and his saving blood, so also must we approach the saints in heaven. Does the Bible say we should approach the saints with our prayers? Yes, in two places. In Revelation 5 verse 8, John saw the Lamb, Christ Jesus, on a throne in the midst of four beasts and twenty-four elders. When the Lamb took the book with the seven seals, the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb in worship, each one having a harp and golden bowls of incenses which are the prayers of the saints. Similarly, in Revelation 8 verse 3 to 4, we are told that something similar happened when the Lamb opened the seventh seal of the book. Another angel came and stood on the altar, having a golden censer, and many incenses were given to him, in order that he will give it with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incenses went up with the prayers of the saints from the hand of the angel before God. These texts give us a way to understand how the saints offer our prayers for us. Our prayers are like nuggets of incense. They smell sweet and good. The twenty-four elders around the throne, who are saints, and the angels offer these nuggets of incense for us. They set them on fire before the throne of God. This is a beautiful image of how the intercession of the saints works. Because the saints are so close to the fire of God's love, and because they stand immediately before Him, they can set our prayers on fire with their love 
and release the power of our prayers. Well then, that will be all for the video this time. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and hopefully all of you have learned a lot from this. And until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and may God bless you.